name's Janine and I was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 41. I very clearly had ADHD growing up. Um, it's very evident in, in the way things were for me. Um, but we didn't talk about ADHD back then, therefore it wasn't picked up. Ironically, my sister got a diagnosis of hyperactivity, but no one was really looking at me in the same way at that stage um, in my life. I was more inattentive uh, when I was younger, but then when I got to my teenage years, I was much more of the hyperactive than the impulsive um, and definitely made some questionable choices for myself um, that um, meant that I was a bit of a, um, a wild child there for a little while and I managed to leave school with no qualifications, um, which I have since made up for in abundance. Um, I work hard and I know me very well now. Um, getting the diagnosis at the age of 41 was the most liberating of things. Um, it meant I could look at myself as who I am rather than looking at myself thinking I was a failing person. I now recognise I was actually quite an outstanding neurodiverse person and I think that's a really, really sort of like good place for me to have got to and I was thriving, doing pretty well. Um, then two things happened. Um, one was that I'd started to have um, the, the physical and the, the um, neurological symptoms of menopause and um, it started to change things for me. At the same time, I had a very stressful period in my life um, and the two things together with the ADHD made the ADHD way worse um, and it was very, very difficult to contend with. What I noticed is as the stress from the situations that had arisen went by the wayside, I was still left with these challenges and I had to work my way through what was, um, what was really going to happen for me and where I was going to be and how I was going to cope moving forward. So um, one of the things that's um, very evident for me, and I think um, from my conversations with other women like me, has been that what I've struggled with is recall um, as part of the executive function difficulties. It's not so much that I've not got the memory, but it's not I've not got the recall. Um, it's still in there, but I just can't get it out quite so easily. And that seems to be typical amongst people that I'm talking to as well. Um, and I think one, um, that's often led to pe people I talk to saying they've struggled in their work. I know I have. I have been so embarrassed sometimes because I'm thinking, I can't remember this conversation. I can remember that I had it, but I can't remember enough detail. Whereas before the menopausal side of things, I could do that. So even if I'd forgotten something, it would only take a small trigger and I'd be like, oh yeah, and I would remember everything. And I don't have that at this stage in my life. And I recognise that will pass and that the menopausal side of things isn't going to be something that stays with me forever, even though the ADHD side of things is going to stay with me forever. So I need to do something about dealing with that difficulty with recall. On a professional basis, I've um, adapted my practice. So I use things like AI much more. And the one I use is called Otter. Um, but there are obviously lots of other things out there. And that provides me with an opportunity to... Um, not worry about trying to take notes and trying to remember everything because I know there's something doing that for me which means I'm much more relaxed and engaged in those conversations because I haven't got to worry about that but also if I need to go back and check something it's easy to do and you don't have to listen to the whole recording so I really recommend getting solution focused to working out what works for you what the problem is and what you can do about it remembering always that this is going to pass you do have to look after yourself more. You are going to have to look after your sleep and your and your diet and your exercise a lot more. I'm probably not doing that as much as I should. I need to deal with that. I know that it helps. It's just difficult sometimes. Um, but honestly, the best advice I can give to you is to be honest with yourself about what you can't do and push back and give those responsibilities back to the people that they, they came from maybe. Um, looking at your children and where you might be able to help them to develop some independence so they're less dependent on you. If you're running a team of people, which a lot of the people I work with are, you know, where can you delegate things back to people? Um, because at this stage in your life, you know a lot. Your worth is in who you are and the conversations that you can have with people. And if you need some help in order to recall things to make that possible, that's what you should do. And you shouldn't be, you shouldn't feel ashamed into, uh, into, into not asking for those sorts of things. Blame and shame and recrimination is a lot of the sort of things that people were talking to me about. And it's really difficult to hear. And you can do it, but you're going to have to be really, really kind to yourself. You're going to have to learn to say no to people. You're going to have to hand things back to people and make things other people's responsibility. It really worried me when I was listening to Davina McCall and she said that 10% of women leave their jobs during this time. But then I was thinking, in some cases, that's probably a good thing. And it's a good thing if it's a choice. It's not a good thing if it's happening to you. 
and um, that's that's the difference. If it's happening because you, you're choosing for it to happen, then great. If it's if it's happening to you and it's outside of your control, not great. So you know, really sort of like looking at what you can do, asking for help, seeking help from medical um, from GPs and that sort of thing, so they can guide you with regards to menopause. Looking at things like HRT, um, I have some experience of that. It's you know, um, it makes a huge difference. Um, with a, with a small amount in my case, but you know, those individual stories, they are there to be had, go looking for them, um, and thanks for listening. <laughs>